I've recorded this video to give you a taste or a flavor of what NLP is. NLP standing for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Now the neuro part represents our neurology and in our neurology how we store code information. But being in our neurology in the mind or the brain as it may be, because there are electrical connections going on with this coding and storing of information. And then we move on to the linguistic part of NLP. And this is the language we use. The language we use can be called surface structure and surface structure connected to the deep structure, which is our map of reality. And we all have our own individual map of reality and one of the presuppositions of NLP is the map is not the territory because the map is just a filter we use to make sense of the world and so the language we use represents that map that is why sometimes when you're in a conversation with someone and you're trying to express yourself in some way and they just don't get it because they have a different map of reality. And then we move on to the programming part of NLP. And it really is reprogramming of these uh, bits of coded information to make positive changes for people who may have behavioral problems or who want to get over some cravings. So NLP is a collection of techniques that are very useful to, that can be easily applied and easily learned in some way. And then, so we can move on then to some other presuppositions. Now there's many presuppositions, some say up to 21. But I like to think of some of the presuppositions like all behaviors have a positive intention and they are useful in some context. So that meaning that, you know, if someone does something that seems like it's a bad behavior, they do that act of behavior to make themselves feel better. At some subconscious level, it makes them feel better to do something that others may think is a bad behavior. And also you may have a bad behavior, like someone getting angry and you say, well, what use would anger be? Well, anger can be a great motivation great for motivation and it can also be used for protecting your family or loved ones so every behavior has some use in some context and it also has a positive intention and then i like the other presupposition that all communication is communication even silence is communication so i want to give you an example of that i'm just going to stop for a moment or two Now, while I didn't stay silent for too long, in those moments of silence, you are probably having some conversation in your mind. What does he mean about this silence? What's this all about? So when you're, if someone says something to you and you don't respond, they start to make up their own responses in their own mind. So there's always some response. So all communication is communication, even though response creates communication on some level. Uh, so then we move on to representational systems and this is a very interesting thing that we all use different representational uh, systems as a primary for us a primary representational system and so we can we can discover those in the language someone uses so i'll give you an example of the language someone may use um, to give you an idea of representational systems. Now we're going to work on the major three representational systems that people would use as primary representational systems. You have the visual, the things we see, or we represent visually. Uh, auditory, the things we hear, or the things we represent 
with our hearing and kinesthetic, the things we feel or the things we represent by touch in some way. And then we have two other senses that, that do come in to play in some, at some point. Olfactory, sense of smell, and gustatory, sense of taste. And you will use these senses, especially when you're choosing food. And of course, the wine connoisseur, he will use the olfactory for the wine. So, but the main representational systems are the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. And how we will discover these is as we communicate with another person in some way. And that is what NLP really is. NLP is a communication tool and makes us excel in some way in our communication because we begin to understand someone's inner world, inner reality, uh, their subconscious thinking in some way. And that gives us more information and them also more information because they are unaware of how they communicate in that way. They're just aware that they communicate and sometimes they don't understand why we don't get it or why someone doesn't get it because we're communicating at different frequencies. Someone's speaking in their main representation system in an auditory way and another is speaking in a visual way and they just don't meet, they pass by in some way. And so to give you an idea of that, just say, for example, someone goes in to choose a car and they're a very visual person and they go in and say, I really like the color of that car. And I love the shape of that car. Now here's a person who is visual. Everything they see in that car or think about in that car is visual for the most part. And then you have the auditory person who goes in to choose the car and they really like the sound of that stereo. That stereo really does it for them. And maybe it has Bluetooth in it or they have a little USB connection for to put their stereo and all their music on. And they also, when they start the car, you hear the hum of that engine. And I really love the sound that comes out the tailpipe when I put my foot down on the accelerator. But there's someone who's really thinking about sounds and they're a very auditory person. And then you get to the kinesthetic person. So how would you think about kinesthetic? The touch of a car? Well, this person may go in, oh, sitting in this seat, that comfort that's in the, that, that car. And I really love the way this steering wheel, and I, can, and I can adjust this steering wheel whatever way I want. And I just love the position of that gear lever. So that's a kinesthetic person, the way they feel their way through the world. Now, it doesn't mean that that's all we use. It's the one we primarily use because the person who's kinesthetic may like the color of the car, but they will speak more about the comfort of the car or something to do that's physically tactile in some way. And another way to get ideas about someone's representational system is to look at eye accessing cues. Now, eye accessing cues are the way we locate information in our minds that when we look a certain way that we, we, we begin to locate different parts of our brain, of our mind, to get various bits of information. And so how we do that is that if someone was, if you're speaking to someone and talking to, to them about something and they were trying to plan out something in the future, they may look up this way. And that's called visual construct because they're constructing something in the future. Or perhaps they may look up this way when you're talking to them about something they did in the past. And that's visually remembered in some way. Or perhaps you ask them about it, uh, uh, some music they heard before, their favorite song, and they look this way. And that's auditory remembered. Or perhaps they will look this way when you talk about some music or if they were to think about something that they'd like to hear that's auditory construct or maybe you talk to them and they feel a little down in some way and they look down this way and that's their down in their feelings and then like earlier when i went quiet for that few moments you may have looked down here in some way as you started to do some internal dialogue and so i have a little image here of what eye accessing cues are. And so you hear, you see this side, visual construct, and then here, auditory construct, here, kinesthetic, and then here, 
you see visually remembered here auditory remembered and here this is auditory digital which is internal dialogue so that's a visual representation of what i've been speaking about and so then we find out other information by using a technique in nlp called the meta model and the meta model helps us burrow down through the generalizations of what people speak about and so when we burrow down about what people the way people speak we get more specific information so go beyond the deletions the distortions and the generalizations they make and then we can move on to other aspects of the way our mind codes information and this is submodalities with submodalities when we think about something think about some past experience we may see moving pictures we may see uh, um, still images we may see black and white images we may hear more auditory information the pictures may be fuzzy hazy off in the distance we may be in the picture which is looking out of our own eyes uh, in the picture and that is associated or we may be looking on at ourselves in that past experience and that's disassociated so this is what some modalities is about and so in a few moments I'm going to give you a demonstration in some way a little bit more information about anchoring so we get back to that in a few moments anchoring so what is anchoring anchoring is based on uh, work by a man called Ivan Pavlov and his work was to do a conditioned response when he was working with some uh, some dogs as an experiment he decided to ring a bell and feed the dogs and he continued this on for a while ring the bell feed the dog ring the bell feed the dog and then eventually what he decided to do was just ring the bell and when he rang the bell what happened was that the dogs would begin to salivate because they expected food now we all experience anchoring or conditioned responses in some way in our everyday life just from our experiences in some way just for example doorbell rings means someone at, someone's at the door you may want to answer it you may not want to answer it but that's a conditioned response or perhaps if you're out driving in the car and next you hear the police siren behind you and you go what did i do get nervous and the police car just sails on by they're not interested you in you in any way whatsoever whatsoever or perhaps another driving one would be red light green light which is an anchor conditioned response you come along to a red light you must stop or you you're expected to stop and green light go so these are other conditioned responses in some way and i would like to think of uh, other conditioned responses is that our anchors is that when someone you care about perhaps gives you a hug in some ways your response to that is that it makes you feel good or perhaps when you were younger or you did something well someone patted you on the back that was kind of a, a, a conditioned response in some way that made you feel that you'd done something well and so they'd be I would think kinesthetic responses the hug and the pat on the back and then you have the other one where you see the traffic light a visual one or the ring at the door and then you would have the uh, the um the police car behind you the same that they're auditory so you have auditory which are the ring at the door and the and the police car these are uh, anchors auditory anchors and then we have the visual ones the visual one being the traffic lights these are visual anchors and then the kinesthetic touch in some way kinesthetic anchors so for our purposes here we're going to uh, work with a kinesthetic type anchor and so to give you some sort of experience of how a kinesthetic anchor would work in some way what we're going to do is we're going to use a technique called collapsing anchors so we're going to get you to think about a negative experience and a positive experience and we're going to create one anchor and then another anchor and then we're going to fire one anchor fire the next anchor and the positive experience is going to be our resource anchor and this we will hope will begin to 
allow that negative anger to fade or change in some way. So what I'd like you to do is think of some recent experience where someone might have annoyed you. you now just something simple where someone just annoyed you slightly. We're not looking for any therapy session here. This is on camera here. So we're just looking for uh, an experience of when someone annoyed you slightly in some way. Just think about that time when someone annoyed you recently in some way. And perhaps as you think about it, you may notice an image come to mind. Is it a still image or a moving image? Is it black and white or is it color? Are you looking out of your own eyes associated or are you looking on at yourself in that situation? Disassociated. What can you hear? Is there more information in that experience that is auditory? Sounds around you, what's being said? Just notice what comes to mind and notice also some feelings that may come up around that, in that experience. Okay. Now, as you think of that experience and the more you think about it, perhaps you begin to feel a little bit annoyed about it again. And as that begins to rise in some way, as it reaches its peak for this moment, I would like you to make a fist with your left hand. Just make a fist with your left hand and squeeze it gently. Just hold on to that peak of that annoyance of experience for a moment. Okay, now release your left hand. Okay, now I want you to squeeze your left hand together again. And just notice how that experience pops to mind again. And release your left hand. Now what I'd like you to do is, I'd like you to spell your surname backwards, out loud. Now I'm not there, so I have to trust that you're doing this so you can get the full benefits of this experience. So just spell your surname out loud. Backwards. Excellent. Assuming you have done that now, what I want you to do is I'm going to ask you to think of a positive experience in a moment, positive experience, but not yet. The reason why I got you to recite, recite your name out loud backwards, it's called a break state, because that information is still going around in your mind and it's just to distract you from that experience in some way. A bit like what uh, hypnotists use as a pattern disrupt in some way, or disrupting that state in some way. So that's why I got you to do that for that. So what I want you to do now is I want you to think of a time you felt that you could just about do anything. And we've all had those times. There may not have been many times like that. But it was times you just felt you could do anything. No one would bother you in any way at all. Just think of a time you could do just about anything. And as you think about that time, notice what comes to mind. Notice are you looking out of your own eyes? Associate it. Is there color in that? Is it black and white? Is it a moving image or a still image? What sounds are going on in that experience? Is it people talking? Is it just noises in the background? What is it? Just notice what it is for yourself. And if there's a, an image there, make it as big and bright as you can. Actually, magnify it in some way just as though you put a huge big magnifying glass in front of it to make it really big so you can feel all those good feelings again feeling like you can really do it again feeling all those good feelings that you can just about do anything nobody could bother you in any way you could just do anything anyone could ask you at that time and as that experience becomes to grow and get more and more up to its peak, I would like you to squeeze your right hand and fist gently, holding on to that experience only as it reaches its peak, feeling all those good feelings. And release that now. Now squeeze your right fist together again and notice all those good feelings begin to rush back in in some way. And as a part of your mind knows how to multiply, I'd like that part of your mind to multiply those feelings, double them up in some way. So you can have double those good feelings. 
And as you feel those feelings double, just squeeze your fist gently as you feel it peak. You may feel it rush through your body in some way. Excellent, I'll release that now. Now what I'd like you to do now is squeeze your left fist and bring that annoying memory back to mind. And now squeeze your right fist and bring all those good feelings in. And just notice as you feel, you may feel like there's some sort of little battle go on inside you. I just feel those like an energy moving in some way. And as it begins to soften, release your left fist, holding on to all those good feelings. And now release your right. Now what I'd like you to do is just think about, just think about that time that you felt annoyed and notice what has changed. And if you have not followed all my instructions, you can always go back and look at this portion of the video and go through the whole experience again. Now what you had was, in your left hand, you had a negative anchor. And in your right hand, you had a resource anchor. And the good thing is now, if you just squeeze that fist gently now, you'll notice that resource anchor still there in some way. So I'm just release that now. And perhaps you may find some experience in the future something coming up and you may feel it well, maybe i can't do that and you can just gently squeeze your fist and notice those good feelings coming back again so that it can help alleviate any of the negative thoughts or feelings you have in some way about that upcoming experience so the next demonstration i'm going to give to you is what's called nested loops so wait for that I'll be right back in a few moments. Nested loops. So what are nested loops? Well, nested loops can be like a story within a story within a story in some way. And it's taking someone from one place where they are or a state they are to a state you'd like them to be in, in a conversational way. Now, when I first heard about nested loops, I thought to myself, these are really difficult. I don't understand what this is all about. How can I get from one state to another state to another state within a story? How on earth could I do that? And then as I thought about it a little more, I began to get a little bit curious. I got curious how you could think about a story and move from one emotional state to another emotional state. How could I really do something like that? And as I got more curious, I got really interested. And as I got really interested in that, those I was thinking about stories and what I could do. And I said to myself, I could really do this. I could do these nested loops if I really wanted to. Now, what have I just done there? What I've done is given you an experience of what a nested loop is. I started off from a place of feeling I couldn't do something. I just could not do it. And then I moved on to a place of, or a state, emotional state of curiosity. And as I got more curious, I moved on to a state of being interested and in where I could achieve this outcome. So this is how we use nested loops when we're working with someone. And This is my visual drawing of what nested loops are. So we start off at the beginning of the story, oh, it's too hard. And then as I move on through the story, I get curious. So here's a story within a story, within a story I get interested and it becomes easier. So now if we're working with someone in some way, and they come in and they feel a little down in some way. So we can talk about there was a time when I felt down and blah, 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 because of I felt down because all these things were happening in my life. And then I thought, 
yeah, it's a nice day out there today. Perhaps I could go out and do something out there. I said, yeah, I really could go out and do it. It really makes me feel good looking out of that day. So here we are. We can move from one state to another state to another state. And it's just about being creative in some way and being more aware of what the client or person is telling you. So you can do this with your friends if they feel a little down or in some way they're very negative. Sometimes you can be around people who can be very negative and sometimes you just need to gently move them in another direction. And that makes such a difference to your experience because all of a sudden your friends aren't so negative and you can both have a more positive experience. So that's what nested loops are. So the next uh, demonstration I'm going to give you is called the circle of excellence. So I'll be back in a few moments for the circle of excellence and I'll see you then. The circle of excellence. So what is the circle of excellence? Everyone likes a little bit more excellence in their life or to feel good in a situation where they may not feel so good usually. So the circle of excellence is a combination of kinesthetic anchors and visual anchors. And so for the circle of excellence, what I want you to do is I want you to think of a time when you felt you could do anything. You could do anything, be anything. There was no negative thoughts in your mind. Perhaps you were doing something. Think of a time you're actually doing something maybe that you were just in the flow state. Now athletes get in the flow state. The flow state is when they let the unconscious work and the conscious mind is out of the way. There's no doubt in their mind. So you've had times like that, the flow state. So think of a time in the flow state. It could have been you were shooting pool or some other sport, playing golf, anything, playing darts. You watch any sports uh, uh, person and they get into the flow state. And when you were in those times, the flow state, and I'm using the flow state because it's a very easily remembered uh, a state because you know when you were playing that game or whatever, it was just no mental effort involved. You just could not do anything wrong. And so this is the state you want to feel that you could do just about anything. So I want you to think of a time that you felt the flow state or just felt you could just about achieve anything. Okay, so hoping something has come to mind. Now what I would like you to do is imagine there's a circle on the floor in front of you. A circle big enough that you could step into. And as you notice that circle on the floor, what color is that circle? Does it have an edge to the circle? Is it just a color, that a rim of a circle and there's no color in the middle? Or does it all fill in the color, the circle then on the floor? Just notice that circle on the floor. What you're actually doing is what in hypnosis terms is called uh, um, a positive hallucination. That you're seeing something there that, or you're putting something there that isn't there. So I want you to see that circle on the floor. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you, I'm sitting here, but I want you to stand up for this. And I want you to step into that circle. Okay? Now if you, if you have to move the circle so you can still see the, the video, just move your circle. So you can step into that circle and step into that circle. And as you step into that circle, I want you to bring that memory back to mind. That memory of being in the flow state, in that state when you could just about do anything. Just bring that back to mind. And as you bring it back to mind, notice any visual aspects to it. Is it a movie? Is it a still picture? Are you associated in it? Are you looking out of your own eyes? If you're looking out of your own eyes, see what you see. If you're disassociated looking on at yourself, I want you to step into yourself to get that full benefits of this. Step into yourself and look out of your own eyes and hear everything you could hear then. 
feel all those good feelings and see everything that's in color in vivid bright colors and if they're not make them as vivid as you can just bring all the qualities you can back into that experience of you being in the flow state or being in that state of excellence of being feeling you could do just about anything and really feel all those good feelings and as you feel all those good feelings gather up inside you feel your whole physiology you may feel tingling or some sort of energy movement within your body at the same time and just notice that or perhaps you feel this flow all down to your body in some way just you're in this energy field within this circle and as you feel all that what i want you to do is i want you to make this okay sign just press that thumb and forefinger together on your right hand and make an okay sign and hold on to all those good feelings and as you release that just step out of the circle excellent now I want you to step back into the circle and bring all those good feelings back up again and put anything else you want into that perhaps even another experience where you felt those good feelings bring it all into that one circle there's plenty of space just bring it all into that circle of excellence perhaps that circle of excellence is like a chew that just covers you around like in star trek when they used to be transported from one place to another the transporter that tube of light around them feel all that around you in this space that space is where you keep all your excellence and as you feel all that grow more and more inside you press your thumb and forefinger together again hold on to all that and step back out of that circle excellent releasing that thumb and forefinger excellent now what i'd like you to do is just step into that circle and as you step into that circle feel all that wonderful feelings of being able to do anything achieve anything feel it in every nerve every fiber every cell of your body and step back out of that circle now what i'd like you to do is because you created the circle i'd like you to shrink that down in your mind and see it on the palm of your hand tiny little spot and keep that somewhere safe always with you so that if you have to do anything in the future you can just throw your circle of excellence down allow it to expand to the right size and step into this energy field that transports you to this feeling of excellence so just throw it down again to make sure you can do that see it expand to the right size and you see this energy field whatever color shape anything that just step into it and feel all those good feelings of that experience and step out of it again and allow it to shrink down into the palm of your hand and keep it anywhere you wish it's yours to bring with you anytime you now have a circle of excellence that you can use for any time any experience coming up in the future if you're getting ready for a presentation or an interview for a job whatever it is you can just put your circle of excellence down step in there and just feel that excellence so that you can go in and be in the flow state and you can really enjoy this experience anytime you wish so i hope you enjoyed your demonstration and experience of the circle of excellence